Today we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and we're going to begin reading in verse 19. Paul has written a letter to the Corinthian church talking about being a servant to all and in there as he goes on into chapter 11 he talks about the sacraments uh, of the Last Supper and we're going to kind of tie this together and learn what it really means when we talk about Holy Communion. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 beginning in verse 19. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jew I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under the law toward Christ that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may partake of it with you. I want us to stop right there. In the world we live in today, there is so many people that are against so many things and they're speaking out and they're protesting. They're protesting uh, racial problems. They're protesting uh, the gay and lesbian uh, association. They're protesting the American flag. They're protesting the American soldier. I mean, it, it's just got to the point that everybody is upset about everything and everyone wants to be right. I want us to really look at this passage of scripture right here and Paul is saying he became all things to all men that he might win them toward the gospel. He's talking about unity. He's talking about being joined together with one cause and that one cause is Jesus Christ. Now I understand that the Bible speaks out against a lot of different things and has a lot of and, and has a lot of people up in arms about a lot of different views. But I think we're missing it. I really believe with all of my heart that if Jesus walked this earth today, if he came as a baby in a manger just just like he did 2000 years ago, if he came that way today, the people that he picked to associate with would not be those that we would associate with. They would be the outcasts. They would be the people that, that we would have nothing to do with. In Jesus' day, he picked the prostitutes. He picked the tax collectors that were hated by men. He picked some of the lowest people on the planet to make his disciples, make the people that he came to to spread the gospel through. He picked those people and I find no evidence, not one shred of evidence in scripture that he ever told them that they were living wrong. What he did was show them how to love. What he did was show them a better life and how he did that was to commune with them was to be with them not carrying a picket sign on the street and screaming obscenities at them and telling them that they're going to hell and just belittling them he never ever once did that as a matter of fact he did quite the opposite as you remember in your scriptures when the, the people brought a woman that was caught in adultery, was caught in adultery, and the law said, you have to stone her. You have to stone her to death. But Jesus looked at the crowd, and he looked at her, and he said, let who is without sin cast the first stone. And I think right there is a key to what Jesus came to teach us. Let who is without sin. Because the Bible says, if you commit one sin, you've committed them all. So you see, we're no better than anybody. We're all sinners. And the only way, the only salvation we have is Jesus Christ. 
If you've committed one, you've committed them all. I want us to go over and look in chapter 11, beginning in verse 23, where Paul is talking there about the institution of the Last Supper. For I received from the Lord that which also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. I want to stop right there just a minute because some of the, the gospel writers, Mark, Luke, Matthew, some of those actually said that it was Judas who was sitting next to Jesus and sharing the same loaf of bread with him that night when he started talking about this. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. I want us to look right back there at verse 25 one more time. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. What is the new covenant? Jesus said we're to love God with all of our heart and love our neighbor as ourself. That is the new covenant. It is that simple. It is that easy. I want each of you, if you have watched this video to the end, to think about this. To, to look into your heart and, and ask Jesus, is there anything in my heart that needs working? Is there any bitterness? Is there any resentment? Is there any hatred in my heart? And if so, Jesus, please, please help me to uproot that and get rid of it. And when you have prayed that prayer, I want you to think about communion. And the reason why I want you to think about communion, why I think it is so important, is because when, we, when, when Jesus sat down at a table, being a Jew, when he sat down at a table, and he invited all the people to come and partake of this, the, the holy sacraments, and he says, do this in remembrance of me, he is saying, all is forgiven. It is done. It is finished. So when we break the bread, and you can do this at home. You don't have to wait to go to church. You can do this at home. Just get you a piece of bread and tear you off a piece of bread, remembering that this is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ that was broken for you and for me and all who call upon His name. No matter what they've ever done or what they will ever do, if they call upon the name of Jesus, they shall be saved. That is what the Bible says. This is his body which was broken. Take and eat it. And then remembering this. This is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed. One drop of this blood saved all men from now, those that were born in the past, the present, and the future. One drop of this blood saved them all. This is the, the blood of our Jesus, Lord Jesus, that was shed for me and for you. And know that when we have done this, that we have been forgiven. And Jesus loves us an unimaginable love. I hope you remember this and I hope you take this to heart. We have to change the way we see people and the way we love people. Thank you and you have a blessed day.